Hey guys, what's going on? This is John with Gamester81. I'm here with my friend John Hancock. We're in his game room. John is the ultimate com uh, complete collector. It's, he's he's the he's like the super guru of game collecting. I mean, he's got an amazing collection. How you doing, John? Doing well. Good seeing you. Absolutely. Yeah. So why don't you tell the viewers kind of a little about your collection? Um, I started my collection. I've been collecting for about 20 years, and I started uh, just started about 20 years ago in the mid 90s. Uh, I gave a good buddy of mine 50 bucks. He was going to the San Jose Flea Mart, and I said, find me something interesting. I didn't even tell him video games. And he came back with a boxed Atari 7800 nice. and about 50 games, for all boxed. And that started all of this. That's amazing. And and one thing you guys will see, we'll do a tour of, his, of John's collection here in a second, but you'll notice a lot of your games you found out in the wild. Yes, yes, in the wild thrift stores, flea marts, aluminum shed. Uh, that's that's a whole other story. But yeah, uh, video game conventions, uh, I, I really try to resort in person because it's cheaper. Right. And, and and like I said, I, I, I had the benefit of doing this earlier than most people. And so um, prices were relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, like I said, continue to pursue stuff I'm looking for. Has, has game collecting changed now than it has when you first started 20 some years ago? Absolutely. Um, like I said, it's much more expensive adding uh, complete items, depending on what you're going for. But Nintendo especially, like Super Nintendo and Nintendo, I mean, the prices are 10 times what they mm -hmm. were when I, why, when I was collecting it. Mm -hmm. What complete collections, collections do you currently own? I have 21 U.S. complete collections, but I'll list the ones that are the, the decent ones. I have a, a complete Vetrex set uh complete dreamcast complete n64 licensed nintendo set missing about 100 boxes um i have a cib sega genesis set i have a cib uh, sega master system us set 32x sega 32x sega cd uh, us um, those are the main ones i have a, some obscure ones like N nokia n-gage mm -hmm. I have a CIB uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color mm -hmm. US set, and I have a bunch of some other obscure ones like Microvision and sure. uh, APFM 1000 and and some other you know like what the heck is that? <laughs> but but yeah, that's the main one. That's all you have? No, I'm uh, joking. <laughs> that's impressive. And, yeah. and a lot of your club collections, like I said, are complete in box, which is which is amazing. So you prefer to find the box, the manual, and everything with it, just the game. Well, a good example, I do, and a good example is uh, I had a, uh, a spare RCA Studio 2 that was donated by a good friend. And unless you have the manual, you don't know that you have to press clear and then the number 3 on the system to get it to work. So some of these oddball systems have really hokey things to get them to work. Yeah. And so it's, it you know, like I said, I, I like to have the manual. Even the, I like to read the backstory. If I'm playing a game, I'll pull out the instruction manual and look at it and just see, like, how, oh, that's bizarre. Or, well, that's interesting. Because <laughs> you always find out more about a game if you have, like, the instruction booklet yeah. with it. Do a lot of these games have a lot of nostalgia value to as well from growing up from a kid? What did yeah. you play with growing up? Oh, growing up, you know, kind of your, your average kid. Uh, I, I didn't have a Nintendo when everybody else had a Nintendo, but my cousins had Atari. And we had a Pong in it, and then later on we got a Nintendo system, and then I I earned my own Sega Genesis system, and okay. so from then it was pretty standard. You know, through high school I was say big Sega and Super Nintendo guy, right. but yeah, Atari was uh, the first experience I had with a home console and yeah. Pong and awesome. Pong. Awesome. John's also not only is obviously on a great collection, but he's also been a big part of the gaming community. He's helped with the Portland Retro Gaming Expo in the past. You have, uh, you're helping charity as well with the Cowlitz. Can you kind of explain a little bit what you're doing with the Cowlitz? Yeah, um, I stepped down uh, helping Portland Retro Gaming Expo mm -hmm. in 2011. Mm -hmm. Due to time, I was pulling two jobs and going to school. And uh, uh, I'd, I'd been getting going a, a charity event called Cowlitz Gamers for Kids. Mm -hmm. And that is a local charity that helps abuse kids. We've currently raised about $16,000 for, for charity. Nice. And I want to thank uh, Portland Retro Gaming Expo because they, they pay for the venue every year. Oh, wow. And so it's wow. kind of win-win. Help, help with one and then step down with a charity event. But right. Portland Retro Gaming Expo and their crew, uh, Rick, Chuck, and Toby and, sure. and crew have, have been very gracious. I'll put a link below so you guys can yeah. certainly check them out if you're in the Portland area. And when's the next event going to be? Uh, Cowlitz Gamers for Kids is typically um, in March or April of every year. Okay. I'm shooting for March of 2014. Cool. So tentative date, um, but we're we're 
we're really excited about it and it's gonna be a great show for a good cause so you not only have great time play some games we also help a great cause. oh like yeah that's yeah, awesome. good stuff you also have a series of videos which i really enjoy guys and i recommend you check them out he does a history of gaming and where can people find your videos and where can people um, buy your videos you know they can email me i i make them by hand Cool. And it's called the Nuts and Bolts to Video Game Collecting. And it's actually a, a collector video. It's a visual guide of my collection broken down by company and game system. And uh, I have a six DVD set that covers Atari, Nintendo, Sega, and a whole bunch more obscure stuff. And it's $25 shipped. And mm -hmm. you just have to email me at O-N-E-S-W-F-A-N at Hotmail.com. All right, I will put a link of that below. So if you guys are curious, and uh, like I said, amazing series. Without any further ado, let's go check out some of your games. All right, awesome. come join us. So John, here we are. This is your your wall of, of box games, so to speak. One wall. Yep. <laughs> yeah, one wall. Absolutely. So what do you have here, John? So um, right here is my license NES set in alphabetical order. Um, I, I'm missing uh, the Panesian games for a complete set for US. But for license, that means everything that Nintendo officially licensed. Uh, that's a U.S. set here in alphabetical order, minus about a hundred boxes. So including um, stadium events, including and, stadium events. Yep. Yeah. And wow. uh, and like I said, uh, stadium events right here. I'm sure people want to see it. Um, U.S. And version. Tell us for those who don't know about this game, what what makes it so rare? Um. The story behind this is that Stadium Events was um, pulled from stores. The Nintendo bought the uh, technology for the Family Fun Fitness and then turned it into the Power Pad. And so Bandai, um, I, I, the story goes is that this game was in limited distribution, mostly in Woolworths stores in the United States. And there's a very limited amount that weren't field destroyed. Mm. And so um, this game... Uh, it's pretty sought after now. It's, you know, I I would say probably a couple thousand now. Loose. Is it a world-class track meet? Is that the, what it kind of eventually evolved to? Or um, it... Yeah, I mean, that's the, I, I do believe so. Um, they they changed the tech, the technology, and they, right. like I said, uh, but yeah, that's, it's, it's super rare, super hard to find. It's not a great game. Save your money. <laughs> Save your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful though with the yeah. PAL version as well because the PAL yeah. version looks very similar. It's a lot more common than yeah. It's got uh, a little B in the corner, and uh, it's it's always you know on eBay, okay. and it's it's it really got to be careful in what you're buying. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's very sought after. A lot of people, a lot of collectors looking for it. I wish yeah. them luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. Uh, other things. Okay, uh, up here, Nintendo 64. This is a complete licensed set, U.S. Wow. I like you have plastic cases too on a lot of these too to kind of keep them protected. Correct. It really helps uh, keep the integrity of the boxes and uh, for clumsiness such as myself, when if I drop one or something, you know, it's it's got a little bit uh, protection. <laughs> cool. What are these uh, these boxes here? What do you have? Okay, so this is pretty um, funny, but um, I'm tired of having paper boxes, and I got bored one day, and I like Minecraft. So I inverted the boxes and added duct tape with a little bit of gold tape and made it into my Minecraft style video game chests. Nice. And each one's labeled and I have I have about 100 boxes to go in, in my collection, but every box is labeled and it has just odds and ends. Uh, let me show you a good one here. That one's not a good one. <laughs> um, so, this is like, um, Spy versus Spy. The Island Caper. It's a um, unreleased game that the Nintendo Age uh, folks on Nintendo Age helped with, and uh, made that nice box and everything. So these are just some nice homebrew or exclusives or stuff from different systems. I, I love collecting um, games that were made aftermarket. And yeah. Some fan or some company made something um like i said there's just there's tons of them uh pure solar is a good example yeah, yeah. for sega genesis i have both versions um in these in these boxes here it's obviously but yeah oh nice yeah yep and i have first, the yeah. first run and first then run. i have the have the other one as well the uh the classic standard edition that's cool but yeah 
Good stuff. Any particular system you like collecting more than others or? I really, really, really like Sega Genesis. And, yeah. and part of that is, you know, for collectors out there looking, um, I get asked all the time, hey, I don't have a lot of money, what do I collect? Um, I, I'm on a budget, I tell people Sega Genesis because the prices haven't gotten ridiculous yet. And, you know, maybe they, they might stay stable for a while, but I, I appreciate Sega Genesis because I, I tell people for a box complete Sega Genesis game, you can get that for about 30% the price of a loose Super Nintendo version. Yeah. So I tell people. Well, the case for... is held over a lot better with a clamshell too. Oh, you yeah. Know. Yeah. And so, but down here you have some. Oh, metrics. yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a complete Vetrex set US, including the, the, the 3D imager. It's complete. Has all the paperwork and everything. I have a box Vetrex system back there. Um, I have several home brews in the corner. Pretty hard to see. Uh, I have more that are boxed. Um, Jaguar. Yeah, Jaguar. I'm missing four games for the set. Um, and not all of them are boxed. But like I said, I did on a budget. Uh -huh. That was a fun. That was fun to collect. Um, over here, I'm missing four games total for Turbo Graphics Hue Card and CD. Missing uh, Magical Chase, like everybody else. <laughs> um, CD ROMs, I'm missing Super Air Zonk, uh, Godzilla, and Dynastic Hero. And, you have uh, some uh, Turbo, uh, Neo Geo Pocket oh, yeah. Color oh, complete, yeah. right? Complete set. It's kind of hard to see. I can pull out a box here. Wow, great. Good stuff. I had a lot of fun collecting that. I didn't have a lot of fun getting the final game. <laughs> <laughs> what was the final game? The final game was Magical Drop Pocket. And I, I got outbid a couple times. Just hard time finding that. I don't know why. Um, I just, for me personally, I had a hard time finding it when I wanted to find it. Right. It wasn't popping up on eBay. And and then finally I just walked into a local store and they had it. Ten, wow. bu ten bucks. And I was la I laughed. Nice. But I, took, I love that. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it's a great feeling, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it was good stuff. <laughs> All right, so yep. uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah, so a lot of my Super Nintendo stuff's boxed right here. Um, I have several, um, you know, games like Super Turrican 2, pretty pretty hard to get. Uh, I have several uncommon games. Uh, list could go on and on. I have a box Hagane. Of course, I don't have it right here when I want to show people. I do have a box Evo. That's pretty hard nice, to get. Nice. Um, Ogre Battle, Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, Breath of Fire. Um, one of my favorite things you got in Trilogy. Nice. It's a great game. Yeah. Great series, sorry. And you keep these alphabetical, which is really cool. I try to, again, with Super NES, it's not alphabetized in that order yet because I'm not at a complete set. Um, when I get there, I'll then alphabetize it. Because there's no point in alphabetizing it when I keep adding to it. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why are, why are these loose? Well, I, I started collecting Super Nintendo for a set a couple years ago. So prices are expensive. And so I'm always looking for stuff. But I'm on a budget like everybody else. And so um, I just get them as I come along. You know, I'm about 70 away from a set. I'd love to have a set. Um, I'm passionate about Super Nintendo. Just getting it as i come how many games roughly came out for it do you 700 700 ish okay there's more than that i don't have the specific answer yeah. and if i say that then someone's gonna say you don't have a specific <laughs> answer i'm like no, no that's all right sorry these are some of your box games here yeah just got that in canada at the canadian vancouver retro gaming expo that was fun adam yeah that's a pretty rare expansion the third module yeah yeah this one uh, a guy drove from california to my to to washington to drop that off to me and it was a it was a deal and transaction for about two years wow it was fun that was nice. a fun one so yeah i have bunches of stuff everywhere um the ooh yeah yeah the ooh yeah the ooh yeah yeah I, I it's a hot mess i like it it's it's got issues but um i think gaming couch gaming it's it's pretty fun for 100 bucks can't go wrong you play modern games too oh yeah yeah okay. halo 4 is my current uh what i'm currently playing torchlight 2 um and a little bit of the ooh yeah cool so yep there's your first first, uh, first the first run atari 7800 and then in the, behind it is the the other version of it but yeah that's uh that's my baby so, explain about this astrocade you're telling me about this oh. this white astrocade pretty rare yeah a lot of people 
asked, hey, what's what's your favorite thing, favorite system in your, in your game room or a rare thing? And, and I would say the Astrocade. I've owned four in, uh, four white ones. I gave one to a friend, have one as a backup, and then one was broken. But um, they're pretty hard to get, and it was an exclusive with Montgomery Ward. It was like a, a modified uh, Astrocade, and they were supposed to have the keyboard add-on to it, but it, that never materialized, and so Montgomery Ward, I think, bought like an extra st stock of these white ones. And I don't know the, all the story of it, but that's... It's an exclusive to that, and they're pretty hard to get. They rarely appear on eBay. Um, you got them on Grimmy Words. Yep, right there in the logo. corner. Yeah. Yep, and That's usually cool. finding the case not cracked or anything is tough. Yeah. So I have two case, two tops, just in case. I love the controllers on the, the system, too. It's fun. Yeah, the cool. triggers. Yeah. Yep. yep. I got my classic cool. setup here where I game. I do, I do game in here. Um, <laughs> I have my 2600 with my favorite controller. With my Harmony cart, that way I'm gonna play something. That's the one, the early pre-production model. Nice. And uh, that's uh, which was at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. That's another reason to go to conventions. You get all a bunch of cool stuff <laughs> yeah. before it gets released. So yeah, and then my pong, my pongs, which are my, I'm passionate about pongs. And so, wrapped around the corner here is uh, a lot of my pong systems. Some of them boxed. Some of them put away but um like i said i i recently got the super pong 4 this one is my favorite pong unit and i, I have four of these hockey pong and huh. it's just a nice black and white pong unit um now one thing you'll notice is like a lot of my games are in good shape some of them are you know not a little bit worn but that's so i can afford it yeah <laughs> So that's got the original AC adapter. Oh, nice. It's a really nice Pong in it. Yeah. Um, in the box, nobody really cares about Pongs. That's why I do. <laughs> um, you know, you can buy them relatively cheap. And uh, and like I said, I, I love uh, love the different colors and sizes of the boxes. Sure. And it's just a lot of fun. Nice what, variants. What kind of advice do you have for collectors today like, when I want to go out and find things in the wild? Um, expand your knowledge. I would say inform yourself on what you're looking for. The big thing I tell people is don't even, don't don't always look for what you're looking for. Look for the value because you might be able to pick something up and trade that for something that you want if you can get a good deal on it. And so uh, that's how I got amassed this collection is that I always not only look for what I was looking for, but if I picked up a double at a good deal, I was able to trade that for what I wanted and save a lot of money that way. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. how I completed my nest set is by bartering and trading online. Sure. It's the only way to do it. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. All right. The other wall. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, you know, I'm I'm known as a Sega collector, but I really collect everything. But um not many people have a licensed uh actually complete Sega Genesis in alphabetical order um spined out on their wall. Like the Outback Joey. Yeah, Outback Joey. Yep, with the manual. Um, what makes that game so rare? Well, it was kind of a separate thing. You know, there's controversy on whether it completed, considered part of the set, but it was a, it was a fitness equipment item that had its own Sega Genesis style system, and it came boxed separately. And uh, you can you can fire this up on a Sega Genesis, but it doesn't have like the right controller. Right. And so it's super, super hard to get. And so um, I have a friend that actually found this at the game store he, he was working at. And we had a significant trade. Yeah. He, knew I, he knew I wanted it. And uh, it, uh, uh, Danny Kim and a uh, great guy. Cool. So cool. props to him. Props to him. Yep. Sega Master System. Uh, complete U.S. set. Uh, my Sonic doesn't have the UPC label on it, but... Uh, nevertheless, it's it's complete as complete as I want it to be. Sega CD complete CIB. Um, again, I'm uh, a huge Sega fan. I completed that a long time ago. I know it's gotten pretty expensive. And then I'm currently working on Saturn. I'm about 40 games away. It's uh, kind of like I said, uh, money uh, money doesn't go as far as it used to. So I'm I'm still working on that. Hmm. Yeah, all, all the original cardboard releases. I even have a variant for the this, the final one. 
Rise of the Dragon. That's a pretty hard one to get. Wow. There's variants of that, of course, like everything else. Complete Dreamcast? Yep. Complete Dreamcast. You know what? Cool thing for, I would say to collectors is Dreamcast is not ridiculous yet. A great, a great system, has good graphics. Um, there's a lot of homebrew games made for it. And it's not too hard to collect for yet. So a lot of fun. Really recommend it. And the PS1 long box. Yeah, long box set. Um, yeah, a lot of these, I, I, like I said, are getting really hard to get. I'm gonna do a shout out for this. Um, for collectors looking for that, it is really hard to get. It is impossible to find. Um, this is the rarest game, I think, for the set. Hmm. So it's a sports game. It's going to be the stadium events of PlayStation Long Box. <laughs> but it, it's pretty hard to get. Huh. Yeah. That was my last game. How many PS1 games do you have? Eh, 7,800. I have them in multiple crates everywhere. But um, I have them all down here, all the way to the wall. But then I have multiple paper boxes full of just stuff. PlayStation 1's another uh, inexpensive game system to collect for. Uh, relatively cheap. Minus the RPGs, but if you just want to play something, it's kind of fun. The other the other cool thing a lot of people don't know is that uh, you can play PlayStation 1 games on your PS3. And um, on any PS3. It's kind of cool. A lot of people don't know that. So all the all the news gets out about the PS2 not being able to... You're not able to play your PS2 games on your PS3, but all PS1 games work huh. for the most part. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Xbox original Xbox games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no complete set there. I have about 200, 250. I kind of just uh, collected what I thought was interesting. And uh, I got some good stuff. Got Steel Battalion about box back here. Um, this is, uh, you know, I collect oddball stuff. Here's my Laser Active, which uh, is pretty pretty hard to get. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got, got about eight of the set. And then uh, Retro Magazine collection, various things. First magazine my game collection was featured in, nice. <laughs> in the very back. Nice. When I was in an apartment. <laughs> that was fun. But yeah, good stuff. I like to read old mags and stuff. You're a big Star Wars fan too, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> well, the original trilogy. Well yeah. we'll see we'll see how they screw up the next series. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's good stuff. Cool. Yeah. There's a steel battalion right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Very cool, John. Yeah. Yeah, I have fun with it. And like I said, uh, uh, I, I prefer the oddball stuff. Um, the reason why I, I kind of go for the obscure gaming stuff is that um, less popularity means usually better value, better cost. And mm -hmm. so, depending on what, depending on what it is, but um, some of the obscure stuff, like the old Pong stuff, is so old that nobody cares anymore because it's all just kind of the same game. And so, I, I like collecting Pongs because it's 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 in my budget. So I have mm -hmm. fun with it. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Links for the tour, John. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Yeah. Glad you, glad you could come by. And uh, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.